Welcome to When Artists Drink Cocktails. I'm your host, Katie Phillips. This series is all about exploring the creative mind, understanding why artists create and the processes behind their work. Today, I'm gonna to visit Dawn Corner. Dawn is a mixed media artist who not only uses paint, paper, and pencils to create her work, but she also taps into her practice of meditation to infuse little bits of her soul into what she creates. And she also has some great advice for silencing your inner critic. And on top of all of that, she's just a very fun and joyful person to talk to. So I know you're gonna like this one. So today I'm with Dawn Corner and she is a mixed media artist uh, based here in the Marietta area. So how are you doing today? I'm really good. How are you, Katie? Good. Thanks for like coming over to my home. Yes, of course. And thank you for this cocktail. Absolutely. Cheers. Yeah. So tell me about this. This is a Manhattan? This is a Manhattan. Okay. It's a bourbon based drink um, and it is made of Maker's Mark, okay. a little bit of sweet vermouth, bitters, which I like orange bitters, and uh -huh. um, Baba, Baba, Baba Bing cherries, <laughs> so yummy. Some of them are bourbon soaked, but I don't think I did that today. Uh -huh. And then you just sort of mix it up. I was a bartender at one point oh, in cool. my prior years. <laughs> so getting... I, I'm with a pro here. <laughs> yes, so I don't actually sh measure in a sense that the normal measures like ounces, I actually just um, count it off in my head gotcha. on the ounce, and then that's how I create the drink. Um, being a bartender, and my husband's grandfather introduced us to them like mm -hmm. way back when. So, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. It's good. Thank Very you. good. I think this is the first time I've had a Manhattan. Mm. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah. I, I think I can, I can, I might get addicted to these. They're a cure all, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> you are a mixed media artist yes. um, tell me you know what does that mean to you and do you have any um, mediums that you maybe gravitate towards more um, let's see mixed media is to me the layering of different types of materials on a substrate such as right. a canvas or paper I um, have always like paper and old books as part of like mixing collage in Um, have you always been an artist? Um, I would assume yes, because when I was younger, my mother would tell me, and I'm one of eight children. Oh, wow. And yes, and I'm from the Philadelphia <laughs> area. And um, my mom always told me if anybody stood still, I would color them or I'd spray them gold <laughs> or I'd do something to them. I didn't, yes, so I believe I've always been a creative. Right. So yeah, it's been pretty cool. It yeah. wasn't always my path, but that's, right. yes. Yeah. But you got there eventually. I was a little drama queen, really. <laughs> So, so what did you do um, before you became an artist? Before I became an artist, I was basically, I went to Drexel, I worked for Ann Taylor, and uh, my, my major was design and marketing, and uh -huh. I was worked in management at Ann Taylor, uh -huh. then I became a buyer at Urban Outfitters, and I was uh -huh. a buyer there for about four years until I had children. <laughs> and then <laughs> I started, I didn't go back to work, mm -hmm. and then I started just doing little dabbles, yeah. doing furniture, stripping furniture. I grew oh. up doing that with my parents. So when I was uh, at home with a baby, I just started drawing again and painting again and taking on little projects. Yeah. And more so in furniture. Uh -huh. So I painted a lot, a lot of furniture. Okay, so you too. cut, so you sort started with furniture and yes. then how did you maybe gravitate towards the what you do now? The canvases, well, basically, well, I was a design major, so I had some really great mixed media um, mm -hmm. teachers, which I loved at school. Okay. And I learned a lot about mixed media back then. And I went to a class somewhere, I forget where, and all of a sudden I'm like, all my mixed media mm -hmm. thoughts came back to me. The layering of things and how you're supposed to use different items to create something on a canvas. And I think that's basically how I ended up starting to push back into my mixed media. And really how I ended up getting back into it was um, very fortunate. We moved here 15 years ago mm -hmm. from Virginia. And I had, um, I was did some classes up there, but some of my neighborhood friends, who are my very good girlfriends, basically said, you need to start teaching us how to journal oh. because so every Wednesday we would get together <laughs> and have a little wine and I would come up with a project for us. Oh, and that is so cool. We did mixed media journaling and uh -huh. projects and just really just finding the inner, pushing down the inner critic and just becoming the inner artist that I wanted to be and the inner teacher I wanted to be. And, right. and those champions of mine, Karen and Lisa, 
they really pushed me forward. Unfortunately, my husband did lose his job, and it pushed uh, me, propelled me even further yeah. into um, my so, my career. Yeah, into, so, so to that so more. that you know, so maybe um, maybe the silver lining of that is that yeah. your business, like you were forced to like make your business yeah. take off. I did. I was. I was, yeah. I sort of had to push it to create it to move it forward. Right. And um, a lot of it had to do with the fact that, and one thing is. It all ties like, sort of together with my son Brian, who mm -hmm. has autism, and okay. we have four children. And Brian, I had to do a lot of therapies and and driving around, so I really couldn't go full time for anything. Mm -hmm. But what happened was, and again, my number one fan is my mom, and also my big pusher too, because uh, yeah. and my <laughs> and she would balance me to say the sense where at first I shouldn't be doing certain things as a young girl. When I wanted to be an artist, but I had to be practical. And she's mm -hmm. like, you need to get a job seriously. Yeah. So I did. And then as soon as all of this with Brian happened, I um she's like, You need you need art. You yeah. need art for you. And it really worked out well because I have brought Brian into my business. Right. He is my stamper and I hope you get to see a little glimpse of him today. Mm -hmm. And he helps me in my studio. He'll like do some whole tag things for me. Like you had, because you, mm -hmm. you know, had that practicality that your yes. mother insisted yes. on. Yes, it's, very practical. Yeah, so, but it actually armed you with, you know, ways to, you know, propel your it, art business. It did in a sense, there were a lot of uh, that practical part of me, that buying part of me. Mm -hmm. Because when I was a buyer, I always felt it was really important to have price points mm -hmm. for every single person every person that wanted to collect art to have a piece of art right. not to price myself so high and out of range for people yeah that when i do when i started doing shows and my first show i did like little pieces and i still do little pieces and i love doing littles because i think people can afford littles right but i started thinking how can i reach more people and how can i spread my um my art out more so mm -hmm. I ended up creating different types of pieces with my art and I ended up starting to do more ornaments mm -hmm. uh, woodwork wood art and um, and you'll see in my studio and some of the reasons why I paint the subjects I paint there's really stories behind all of them yeah so yeah so I uh, learned a lot yeah and I am um, find joy in creating yeah it, it is a happy place for all of us okay so we've had all of this great talk about your work and your mixed media and your process so can we go see where you where you yeah. create all yes, of these? yes yes please. yes please i can't wait to show you my studio all right great let's go okay <laughs> bring our drinks yes Welcome to my studio, Katie. Yes. Thanks for coming in. Yes, hey. thanks for having me. Oh You're my gosh. So welcome. Look at all of this. So Katie, this was my original studio. Really? So basically now it's just like it holds all my brushes over here. It holds a lot of extra pieces there. The canvases are here sometimes. Paints, the books I love to look at for references. And then like my vintage vases, which I love to sort of do <laughs> still lives. lives yeah. and lives. And uh, I took our kids' basement over, basically, and, um, yeah, so my husband said, yeah, the kids don't need it anymore, you can have it. Oh. <laughs> it's like, yes! So this is where I create, back here on this wall are all the classes I teach. They are all my meditative art journaling mixed media classes. And mixed media, as we go back to it, it's all part of stenciling and any type of tool you can have. You can put a crayon in here. One of my favorite things I've been obsessed with lately, if I can find them, are my woodies, which are so fun. I like these little things, the Stabilo woodies. Ooh. And they're just fun because they're a crayon, but they're water soluble. So if you ever get a chance to get these, they're really fun to use. I love them. of an underpainting yeah um, and that's what mixed media is I mean you can throw and down here there's like inks that I use 
on some paintings, not everything, but just to me, the options of being able to put as much as you can into a painting and knowing that white can erase it all. <laughs> so that's my favorite tip. So, and another tip is for everybody artist to do this. And I learned this from um, Julia Cameron, the artist way, she wrote the artist way. Always leave, always put a picture of yourself as a child in your studio because that way you will never criticize her because your inner critic's gonna come out and beat you up, but you will never say anything bad to, bad to her. Oh, that's such a good idea. So always, <laughs> and I have actually several. There's one over there of me in a little orange dress. I also have my husband too. But um, yeah, so it's a really good idea. So don't say bad things to her. You will never say bad things to that little girl. Okay, so tell me about a typical day in your studio. I usually get down here about 10, 10.30, 10 o'clock, I try. And then um, the first thing I usually do is I will light some sage. And I'll do the sage, because it really, like, and then I walk around and I try to balance, it balances me. And um, then I will have like a cup of tea with me always. I never ha actually drink it, but it's with me as a comforting thing in case. I have water and then I, um, I sort of look around, see what I have on my running list. I do a little journaling and it's like on a, in my, um, it's even in my old journals, I have a whole bunch of them. And I just write on top of other things. I make a grid and I'll just pour out what I'm feeling, but I do it in a hidden handwriting so nobody really knows what it is and I don't know what it is after I walk away from it. And then I sort of have also a prayer list. I have a grateful list and then I have a to-do list. And there, I can read those. <laughs> I can read them. And I usually work until like five, sometimes later, depending on what year, time of year it is. The biggest trick is that my dog, Bear, named after our children, uh, Brian, Emma, Alice, and Robbie, he walks to the back door and he starts scratching. And then I know that I have to go. <laughs> so that usually ends my day in my studio. So, <laughs> so Bear, Bear calls the shots. He calls the shots because then he's like, it's time to go up and start dinner and get things moving for the, for into the evening. So yeah. So Bear calls the shots in my studio. <laughs> okay, so you have a signature style to it that has, to me, like a sweetness, but also comes across as, I think, pretty refined. Um, have you always painted in this style or, or how would you, you know, describe your style and, and how you've developed it over time? I think, no, I've not always painted this way. I think when we first start out, every artist, even though I went to for school for design and merchandising, I did not take painting. I actually am more of a self-taught painter. I took workshops and I worked with um, just a uh, local artist. And I feel like you start finding your voice after you're painting a lot. You paint like, what do they say, over a hundred or thousands of paintings and all of a sudden your voice starts coming through. So basically that's what happened to me. I was very stiff and realistic. And then the, the more I started painting, the more I wanted texture and the more I wanted um, palette knife work. And so I started just moving into different, I love florals, I still do florals, but then I wanted to do some of my figures and those are my sisters, they're the bridesmaids. Um, I love when people send me pictures of that. I do boats, I do the holy families because I think it's very important to me. Um, hearts, florals, landscapes and I do a lot of angels and the angels are probably one of my biggest sellers um, years ago the reason why I do angels is because um, my mother went into the hospital and she was uh, one of the first angels I ever created and then from there it just sort of blew up to doing I do the angels on wood for people I do them on canvas I take um, just a specific type of person and I sort of uh, allowed that the angel spirit to come to me and I re recreate it for them. And then I just do, I do a lot of different things. I can't really pinpoint, and I so much thank you for your um, compliments about my work. Sometimes I have a very hard time describing it because I'm sort of ADD, I feel like that. I think we all are, are as artists because I'm like, oh, squirrel, I wanna go paint like this today. I wanna go paint like this. So um, it's just been fun. And if I can't find the joy in it, then I go back to my little girl and I start talking to her. And I'm like, please help me get that joy back again. So yeah, that's where I paint a little bit of everything, I believe, so. So 
I know you teach a lot of art classes. Yes, I do. So tell me, what's your favorite thing about teaching and what kind of classes do you teach? Okay, so I think one of my favorite things to teach is, um, I love the meditation. They're called meditation um, mixed media art journaling classes okay. and you create a 10 by 10 canvas. And I start out with a meditation and you answer questions on vintage papers and then you write them and that becomes part of your painting. And I think what I love about it is it's usually a temp, people we follow templates because a lot of people are afraid of painting and they're like, I'll never be able to perform, I'll never be able to do this. But then as the night goes on, the mm -hmm. women are like, I did this, this is what came out of me. And the best thing about it, and I love it because at the end, everyone will stamp a word or something. It's exactly where they are in that moment. It's like a mandala. Like you write your, all your inner thoughts in a mandala and whatever your subconscious and your consciousness comes together, that's what comes out in painting. Hmm. And I think that comes out with most of us as artists, like yeah. you and me. Whatever's inside of us is always coming out. We are like giving our soul to our work. Yes. And when I sit with women, and it's mostly women that do my classes because they're looking for something. Mm -hmm. They're sort of looking for like having a little drink, having a little <laughs> appetizer, and then they want a little fun. And I'm like, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. And it's been really lovely and I, I enjoy it so much. So yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's yes. really great. I want to take one of your classes. I hope you do. <laughs> I would love you to. Thank you so much. I'd be honored. <laughs> Okay, so what is a popular misconception about artists that, that you hear a lot? It's funny. I think the biggest misconception is that our work is pretty easy. Like oh. anybody can do it. Um, <laughs> I can do that. I can, I can throw some paint on a canvas and do it. And that yeah. we don't really work that hard. Mm -hmm. um, I think artists, we show so much courage because we are giving the world our our art and where we stand and what we believe in and the subjects matters like if it goes from the cardinals or if it goes from sailboats or from um, your holy families or angels we as artists are lucky enough that we can take a little piece of our time and we can present it to the world and hopefully the world will open up and take what we give yeah and i think that's the biggest misconception because everyone thinks it's so easy but it's a lot of uh Artists fear a lot. We're, yeah. we're constantly sometimes living in fear, like, oh, am I going to be good enough? Am I, can I get into that place? Can I do that thing? But I think um, we all have to keep trying, yeah. and that's my thing about artists. Yeah, and it's, it's like your, your soul is on display, you know? All, yes, all the time. Yeah. And people, like, it's good. Yeah. Not always, but it's, <laughs> it's good. But, yeah, there's, a, there's always people out there that that are just not going to appreciate artists, but that's yeah. okay. That's okay. That's why there's chocolate vanilla ice cream all <laughs> over the world, different cocktails all over the world. Yes. <laughs> so now time for a fun question. If you could invite anyone living or dead over for a cocktail, a Manhattan perhaps, mm -hmm. who would you invite? I would of course invite my mother. Okay. I would invite my mom. Um, she turned me, well, she would drink Gibson's. <laughs> and here's a funny story. When I was little, she would have the cocktail onions of Gibson's and Gibson's is a gin drink. Um, I think I ate a whole jar of those cocktail onions <laughs> and it was like, I, I, stopped, I didn't eat onions for years. <laughs> now I eat onions, but it would be my mom. Yeah. And of course I, would, I couldn't have my mom without my dad. Right. So, you know, that evil thing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm picking two. Okay. So that's fair. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tell me what's um, on the horizon for your work? I will keep doing my open studios. Mm -hmm. I think open studios are a way for people to come in on a Saturday or a Friday. I'll let people know that I'm available for commission work. Um, my big thing I was thinking about is possibly doing Zoom meditation classes for oh, people really? that are outside of mm -hmm. the Georgia area. Yeah. Because other people may want to do it and I've had some spark of interest for other people. Yeah. And maybe we should start doing artist collaborations. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, like that. That could be fun. <laughs> All right, so where can people find your work now? Do you have, you know, you have a website or yes. do you have any uh, I'm, retail? I'm actually in one, I'm in Art of Touch uh, Massage down in Atlanta and um, I'm over at Heart and Soul in um, Marietta. Okay. I do a lot of online, my, my studio, I sell a lot of work off of Instagram. My website is Art by Dawn Corner. I'm working on it, <laughs> getting it better. 
But really, Art by Dawn Corner is on all my social. I'm Facebook, Art by Dawn Corner, Twitter, Instagram. Okay. And that's where you can find me. Okay. Yep. Art by Dawn Corner. Art by Dawn Corner. Okay. Around the corner. <laughs> well, thank you, Dawn, for having me over for Absolutely. this delicious Katie. Manhattan, for introducing me to the Manhattan. I know. So, yes. I'm, I can't wait to have all, I can't wait to interview Katie someday. <laughs> Cheers. Thank Cheers. You thank you. Me. Thank you. Join us on the blog where you can learn more info about Dawn Corner and of course get that delicious cocktail recipe.